Welcome everyone to a new Sunday evening Bible study session. We are excited again for another day um, that God has graced us with, which is life. Um, if you're here today, then um, the blessing of God is upon your life. And to acknowledge his blessing is to be grateful about it too, because many has not even woken up today. So we are privileged um, to be here today. So I just wanna welcome each and every person who's participating live with us, whether you're watching the replay or um, you're here um, uh, watching in real time. We just wanna welcome you personally. And um, we wanna remind you that so everyone who's participating, um, who's watching or more than um, recommended to join live so that you can ask questions so that you can, you know, go back and forth with what God has placed in your heart, because we know that the Holy Spirit is working in all of us. So that means whatever God put in me, he may put something different in you that we we're not revealed with. So it's encouraged that we come together and we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the word that God placed in us. So we're just happy to have each and every one of you here. Um, and without further ado, we're about to get into prayer. And then um, if anybody had a testimony or two, we can get into that. And then we get straight into the word thereafter. So let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you for having us here today. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with us and continue to guide us in everything that we're going to do today. Let it be you, Lord Father God, that dictate what's to say, what to do, and how to say it to Lord Father God. Let it be that you do the influencing, Lord Father God. All those who are watching, Lord Father God, right now, that you are blessing them wherever they may be, and that the word and the Holy Spirit dwell in their space as well, Lord Father God. We thank you. We honor you. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, welcome. I don't know who's the 917 number, but welcome. If you could just say hello. Uh, hi, everybody. This is me, Steve Moses. Oh, it's Moses. Welcome, my brother. Moses? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can just spare a little time. I I might work now, so um, if you all miss me during the um the broadcast, and I'm saying I'm still working. No battery. Wow. No problem. Wow. Glad to have yeah. you. Wow. and and we kind of my condolences to your grandfather and to the family. I'm sorry to hear that you know you passed away. You know, may his soul rest in peace. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you very much. All right, man. Thanks. All right, guys. So, um, any quick testimony we could, you know, share that now. If not, we're getting into the word. Okay. Um, so, if there's nobody who has anything to share, I'll just briefly start. Um, I, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, bring in a. a a word today is connected to I think what we've all been talking about last week and the week before, which um, this morning when I woke up, I heard the word, the truth shall set you free. It, it dawned on me that we've been speaking about the word truth for a long time now. And I feel like it was on that process that I go onto that topic. Um, <clears throat> I had asked, uh, God was revealing to me something that maybe I, I feel I should share with everyone. And I hope that I could be a, could be a blessing to others and that we could find a, a new revelation. Um, if you don't mind, we can just go to that scripture uh, very briefly. John, <coughs> excuse me, John chapter eight. <clears throat> Sorry. You won't read the whole verse chapter, just those, those minor, those parts specifically. Um, verse 32 on we'll just read 
verses 32 to 46. I read it. And ye shall know the truth. <clears throat> Sorry. And the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou he shall make he shall be made free? Jesus answered them. Verily I say unto you, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my God has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then Jesus, they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus answered them, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because you cannot fear my hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced me of sin? Mm. If I say the truth, why do you not believe? He that is of God hears God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Mm. I'll stop there. Heavenly Father, we seek the truth. We seek your understanding. Mm. Seek your knowledge. We seek to have your mind as you fill with us your mind to know the truth. We ask, Lord God, that you will direct us, keep us close to you, and let nothing else but you direct us, Lord God. Lord God. We honor you, we love you, we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. we see here a couple of things that seems to be um, of, of noteworthy. First thing is that Jesus is speaking to the Jews. He's speaking for spe specifically to men of God, supposedly men of God. He's speaking specifically to the, the, the church leaders. Mm -hmm. um, if you know further up, Above that the, the chapter, this was actually the part where the, the leaders came with the women to stone them. I believe I brought that last week, the week before. I recall. We've been on this chapter for a while. And so they brought the woman to stone him. And the, the particular reason, oh, this was pastor brought up, if I'm correct. That was last week, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and the basic concept the whole point of it all the whole plan was it was to trap jesus because they knew something they had an idea a plan which is which now reveals something interesting that i i made it may have moved upon me or they knew jesus would not stone this woman to death this is the important part of the plan the plan has to work 
and that they knew that he would not stone them to death. But they also knew that this was the law, which is to stone her to death. So something is wrong with those two, those two processes, because two can't be true. One can't be that it is righteous to stone her and unrighteous to stone her, right? So that is the tr that is the trick here. Now, I don't need to be a uh, a very philosophical pre person to tell you that it doesn't sound like a good thing to stone someone to death for a certain sin. But we all acknowledge that it is something that is required of a certain level of thinking, especially in those days. And they knew this about Jesus because they knew of his temperament. They knew of his treatment of those who are considered sinners. It is one of the main appeals of Jesus is that he judges no one and that he calls himself the son of God, but he um, consorts himself to publicans, as they call them, you know, and he is gentle to those who others have rejected. That is the appeal of Jesus. Jesus comes to the lost first. It is a, it is a very important characteristic, characteristic trait because it becomes the main appeal of Christianity. If you allow me to use that term, it becomes the thing that, that puts Christianity apart from other religions is that we are humble and that we are a people that is for the lowliest of the idea of come as you are is a very Christian thing. Come as you are is the mentality that we learn from Christ is to not tell, impose people to have to change before they come to Christ, but to seek change in Christ. Amen? Is that the work is not done before you get to God. The work is done after you get to God, that God is doing the work for you. So you're not going to say, I'm not going to wait to fix myself, then come to God, as opposed to the way it was before, where they will tell you, um, Perisius, to go into the Holy of Holies, you have to do this, you have to slaughter this, then you have to do the prayer, then you have to do all these things before you could even be worthy to go to the Holy of Holies, right? So this is the change, this is the opposite. And the way those that works is how many religions work. It's a very, um, I said this the other day, we were reading about um, the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. It is that the way the belief system of God was in those days is that God is a distant character that you have to reach and have to contact. And somebody has to be the one to do it. It can't be all of us. And not everyone is worthy. So he has, he's so powerful and so distant and so dangerous that he can only give his access. Only some have access to God. As a matter of fact, the way um, the old days, the way we read scripture is one person reads scripture and we read it to the group. You're not allowed to take the Bible home with you because the Bible itself was considered uh, extremely holy. As a matter of fact, the words... The first books were in the the the, the Ark of the Covenant. The, the five the Pentateuch the, the first five books after Moses gave the books he put it in the it was what it was stored in the in the covenant. <clears throat> and the way they would teach you is the high priest would gather around and he would read the words. That's how you would learn scripture. The people were taught the story. They wouldn't take it with you and home and then you could read it. Well, also, most people couldn't read anyway. So as that part is it would be very rare for anyone to even a, a very intelligent person to be literate. It doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. It's just a different language. And those it's, it would be like today if you say that, um, say, Brother Stevens, is he's a computer code. He can read code, right? Does it mean that I'm stupid because I can't read code? No, it just means that there's a language that we haven't learned yet. I imagine today children, my children's age are learning code. So maybe a hundred years from now, everybody will know how to read code. You see what I'm saying? So reading is a new invention in the human, um, in, in, to, in those days. It's a brand new thing. Writing is a brand new thing. So it wouldn't be common. 
So one of those things to, to add to the point is that yes, it was distant. So it, it, it wasn't new. Mm -hmm. It wasn't new, except it was. It, it is not for you. Mm. It's it's elite. Okay, that's the word to use. That that's the word for to use. That's the right word. That's for the elite. Yeah. For the elite. Mm -hmm. it's important. I make that point because it got again. It goes back to the distance, so that only the elite would be given. Yeah. The, the, it, it started from Egypt. Yeah. It start from Egypt. Egypt. You see, that's why they have a um the the king. And you have to be part of the king royalty in order to read book or to go out. Reading was completely separated from the masses. Well, a, a good thing you make that point because we know that when we first get the five books is when we have a priest who is a who is a king who can read to write it. So it's not even though Aaron might have been given oral tradition, Moses is the first to record information. So because he is a... Is well, not exactly. Not exactly Moses was the first to record information. Because Moses himself have got information. From before. From before. What uh, recorded yeah. information from before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from, from before. However, remember, Moses was one of the elite. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hmm. The point I'm making is that before that, what you would have was oral tradition, meaning that you'd have to memorize everything and pass it down. And that's how the priests actually, um, the priests outside of Egypt. So other outside of religion, other different cultures, they did oral tradition. So the story that Moses is writing as a record, is that something that is Egyptian? It's an Egyptian thing to write. To papyrus is an Egyptian invention. So these are new to the Mesopotamians. This is a this is a tradition that comes from Africa, that comes from old. Uh, anyway, the point being as this is elite, it's distant, and we're talking about all of these things that are considered knowledge of God. They have a distant connection to God. Even Moses, when he first spoke to God. He had to be restored. He had to be physically restored because technically he was dying. And even when um, Isaiah sp first, before he could even speak to God, he had to be burnt. His, his mouth had to be cleansed with fire because it was, he was uncleansed. And all these references show you about the distance with God and the man before Christ. Christ doesn't require these things. The relationship with Christ is different. What Christ does is he goes past and beyond these things to have a relationship with you and I. So, <clears throat> sorry. So we have, in, the, in essence, we see Christ is not in the, pres, pers, in, the, in the realm of telling us a story that he doesn't know. He doesn't wait to tell you, or he's not giving you some kind of fable story. He is it's not giving you second hand. <laughs> Amen. He is di directly talking to you. And in essence, what he's doing, which is another thing, which is weird, is he is actually challenging you to challenge him. That's right. <laughs> it's a beauty. <laughs> When the world, I'm sorry, my brother, you treat me too much. <laughs> yeah. When the world today, when you go to the church, to the church where we have pastors, and most of these people, they go to seminary, and some of them have PhD. If they are preaching, you cannot stop them, you know, to ask them questions. That's in song. Look at Yeshua. 
the master of masters. He allow you to challenge. <laughs> so going back to the beginning, uh, before we even get there, we're talking about the plan, the plot that these that the Pharisees have, which is to set Jesus up. Because again, we're so we're talking about a plan of knowing what is supposed to happen if he is so-called a godly person, a man of God, who is supposed to be the son of God, because of course God gave us the law, right? And if he, they know the law, but they also know that this is a man who is of the people. And they also know that of the people, what people do not like about men of the law is their judgment of the people. And the people who do not like the people who judge is that those people are harsh. We're talking about the Pharisees. Yes, sir. About this, this treatment that it comes at a sense of righteousness or self-righteousness. That's the basic word. The word self-righteousness comes from that mentality of that I have self-opposed righteousness of me. I have because I am the chosen or I am a elite. I am the son of a priest, thus making me a priest that I've lived in this you know, I've been passed down righteousness from my father and my forefather until Aaron. So I have this air of righteousness based on the fact that I am a relative of Aaron. I am a Levi. I am the son of the priests, and I have been holding up the, 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 the tradition of Ezra. This is the new, the new version of Aaron. So the mentality itself, they acknowledge already their truth. They acknowledge even in the plot to tra trap Christ, is that they know that they are unpopular to the people. <laughs> they know that in order to disconnect the people is to force the people to succumb to the reality that their law, which is un unpopular and is unpleasant, will force them to have to hate Jesus or Jesus is a liar. Because well, it, 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 the point here, the trap, mm -hmm. the trap was when sin. There is no way, there is no way Christ should get, should be trapped mm -hmm. in that quest, in that, in that the trap. Because if Christ say no, if Christ say no, why don't, don't stall him? Is he, he violated the law? If Christ, um, yes, say yes, he stole them. He also violated the law. In any way, Christ was going to to trap. In any way, in any way, <laughs> in any way, he is a is a well set. One guy trapped me like this. One brother trapped me like this, and I get caught. I get caught in that uh, a sample uh, a business right on radio. I get caught because I, I, I'm trapped. This is a well set trap. <laughs> God of this. You get out of the, the point. So when we go back to Christ saying the truth shall set you free, this is the this is the whole point of the whole, of the message. And I, I'm I'm gonna give you the point of the message early, and then we can go around it. Is that what is the truth? Yes, sir. Truth. And that's the thing. Truth is not a thing. Truth oh. is a spirit. Yes, sir. Truth is a lot of things. Truth is, yes, the spirit of God himself. Truth is the law, which is God himself. Truth is love, which is God himself. Truth is life, which is God himself. Truth is the word, which is God himself. The word is easy. It is not hard. It is plain. And what I was saying, what I started is that those men knew the truth. In order to trap God, they knew the truth. And they knew the truth in their hearts was that they knew immediately Christ would do the right thing, which is the stone of the man. And they twist it. 
So here's the thing. If they knew that the right thing would be not to stone the woman, yet they acknowledge that it is not the law. Uh-oh. I just said something that is not as contradiction. So here is the truth. We know that God is righteous. We know the righteous thing, but we know what is supposed to be the law. So then you have Christ who says the truth shall set you free. So what are we talking about? Because Christ wasn't talking to, the, to, to just one group of people. He was talking to people. When he said this word, he was speaking to the Pharisees and the followers of Jews, the Jewish people who are following Pharisees, who are supposed to be telling you the truth. But this was the challenge that Christ is having to the people who taught that they were following Christ. He wasn't talking to Gentiles. No. He wasn't talking to people no. who never heard the word of God. No. He likes saying, in essence, he's not talking to, he's talking to us, the, the, the people of the cloth. He's talking to the, us who are in the church. He was in the church. As he, the saying goes, you're preaching to the choir. That's what he was speaking. And he was telling the people of the choir that you're lost. And the, 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 their response is like, what are you talking about? We ain't lost. We, we, we're free. What do you mean make us free? We've been free. We were never in bondage. You see the mentality that they have, the self-righteousness that they had not immediately acknowledged the reality of their darkness. But how many times we kill them? Mm -hmm. How much time we kill them? Mm. We, those of us who are calling upon the name of God, who are publishing Jesus Christ every day, every day, Last night I was reading the Bible, and no, today, this not today. Um, me and Diana and Ivan we were talking about Bible. We read in the in the verse and verse um and John chapter twelve. And this is what he said in John twelve. In John twelve. Listen to that, to this, what he said. In verse 25, he said, if you love me, if you love, if you love, if that love is, he that love is life shall lose it. And he that hate is life and this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And he goes on to say, uh, before then he said, if you love me, you do what I said. What he said, they, they look at verse, if you love me, and that same passage is, if you love me, if any man Serve me. Let him follow me. And where I am, there he shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. But the verse I'm looking for is the verse that said, Whosoever love me, Do what I tell you to do. If you love me, so I, I put that, brought that in um, to perspective is that. What Christ is doing is freeing us, not from um, an unknown sin. I'm a known, sorry, known sin. It's freeing us from an unknown sin. Because what Christ was telling them was he was telling them the truth shall set you free. He was speaking to those who were supposedly free. He wasn't speaking to the slaves. 
He wasn't speaking to people of bondage. He wasn't speaking to the lost, quote unquote. He was speaking to those who call themselves the children of God. And that is an important message. That is an important thought process because until then, people who thought themselves to be righteous were living a life of bondage and they did not know it. And the first thing he tells them is that you do the works of your father. And that is a very harsh thing to tell you that your father is the devil. <laughs> and you not know it. That's a very harsh revelation to be assuming that you are doing the work of God. And it turns out that the work of God you're doing is the work of the devil. But of course, if all you ever known is darkness and you think that righteousness is darkness, you think you're doing a good thing, such as killing somebody for because uh, supposedly that's the way it's supposed to be done for something as mundane as you know not obeying the sabbath you know what i mean and you say that this is righteousness this is the truth this is what god's way this is good this is not evil you can do good great great good with such evil that itself is a darkness that is made light as opposed to bringing light into darkness. as a darkness that is made to look like light. And that is a dangerous new sin, an ability to think you are preaching light while being in darkness. And that becomes the new model that the devil has designed to the point that no one sees it, to the point that you would not see that you were working for the devil. It is very clear that the Sadducees, the children of Abraham, who preach the word of Moses, are doing the devil's work in totality, in fullness of the devil's work, to the level that the devil himself uses them to chastise Christ, to chastise God. And it was that point that when they finally failed that the, the devil himself had to go about it and say, you know what, okay, I'm going to tempt you using the word of Moses, the Bible, to, 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 to disprove Christ, to, to, to tempt Christ. That is the truth. There is a truth and then there's a lie. And how do you know the truth? How do you know the lie, I'm sorry, is by knowing the truth. You will never know the lie unless you know the truth. And the truth is Christ. The truth is the word. Yep, uh, again, it is true that the Pharisees was the leading, um, the leading, distraction of Christ. It is true. Excuse me. But then today, what do we see today? It is the same connection with the Pharisees. What do we see today? In other words, you take the truth from Pharisees, which is 2,000 years ago, right? Hmm. 2,000 years ago, because what what you are leading now, you are leading about 2,000 years ago, what had happened 2,000 years ago. What has happened now? It's the same thing. <laughs> it, it is the same connection happened now. In other words, you are not speaking only 2,000 years ago, but you are speaking right now as you and I breathing and living right here on earth. Well, uh, let's, let's elaborate on that. Let's go further into the part I said before about hiding in darkness or being using darkness as light. Yeah. A good example is when the, when the transatlantic slave, slave trade happened and the Pope decides to say that because according to something that has been in the Bible, it says that God says that the people of a certain skin color are inferior because God says so. It's in the Bible. And then it, rather than admit that you have a natural hatred for a people because a pope hated the black pope before him, he created, he rather than admit the darkness within them, which is the devil, 
we, we leave for leave the book now. Well, let us come. Let us come closer again. Yeah, your kidding. your secretary, your secretary, use the Bible mm -hmm. right in America. The, the, I think he was the secretary of the 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 the, the, the general, from the general. Attorney general, yeah. End of this defense, yeah. What are you talking? Um, and of Trump, and the Trump, and the Trump, and the Trump. Thing. When they were putting those little children, they were putting those people on the on the last thing. They use he used Bible. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the thing about that's important. Jeff Sessions, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You quote the Bible. Man, you know, here's a, here's a very important part of that. <laughs> if you saw that, you saw that, that, that interview, you see when he said it, you saw the smile on his face. Of course, man. It's, it's a smile of knowing he just lied to you in his face. <laughs> he knows it, but at the same time, he's actually using the truth, quote unquote, the Bible. To do a great evil to justify to justify so here's the thing though i'm going back to the pharisees who knew yes evil. yes who knew the evil. see what, <laughs> what has happened is that evil itself has become justified in the bible yes they have allowed the bible to be a tool to, to use to do evil we have used the bible always for evil is for it does far more evil than good, as a matter of fact. Honestly, the truth of the matter is, most wars are because of the Bible, most religions is from the Bible, most hatred, most divisions is because of the Bible. Go ahead. In fact, in fact, America or group of leaders down south use the Bible for slavery. They use it to justify that the black person don't have no sense. He's not a human. The same thing, put, put it there. You can see, you take it. Oh, you take it. It's so beautiful, my dear brother. You take it all away from the Pharisees. You bring it to the pastors. Then you bring it to the, um, the government itself. The makeup of the government, which is again a Christian country, a Christian country, use the Bible to justify the evil that has happened for a certain group of people. So you see, Jesus Christ, when he tell you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free this is the truth we're talking with now in that that sequence so christ first tells them that they have been lied they've been lied to uh -huh. and that they're liars they're lying so i did three things one that they've been lied to Two, that they themselves are liars and they are lying to their people. So in, in one sequence, he says, you do the work of your father. Yes, your father has lied to you. And you're doing his work, you are lying. And then you're, doing, you're lying to others. You are leaders, so you are doing the work of your father. You're lying and then you're teaching them lies. Three things you're doing, three, de three, three de detriments. And he's telling them this is because the reality is the truth should have been clear. The truth should have been honest, easy. They should easily have acknowledged Christ as God. I, just as easily as you and I do right now. The problem is they already know he is Christ. They already know who he is, but it's not the truth that they have. The truth that they have has allowed them a certain privilege, has allowed them a self, a sense of self-righteousness. In the same way that a racist pastor already knows he's wrong, 
no such thing as a person who is ignorant to racism. That is a lie. People who use racism and say that they don't know, they lie to you. Because the truth is no one doesn't know that you shouldn't treat people the way you treat yourself because you read in scripture. It says two unto others as you do unto self. So the nobody who learns that as a child doesn't know that racism is wrong. Doesn't know that I want you to go, I want you to go, I want you to go to verse 43 and then hit 44 since you are talking about lie. What verse are we going? Verse 43. Verse 43, but verse 44, um, give it to you right to the nose. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my words? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. <clears throat> He's a liar and the father of it. And then now you go back to the story of Adam and Eve. Mm. That's where Christ go back to them, you know. This is where Christ put them to when Lucifer or when devil go to Eve and lie to Eve discarded what god said to eve and adam what they should do and then eve believe it and here we are here we are we face the situation we are now because devil is the first one who lied to mankind devil is the first one who lied to us therefore he is the father of it. But then, devil do another thing. He conceive other children, such as us, who are his children, and keep on lying to our teeth. So, when Christ said now, um, is, the, is your father you going to work with your father? Is referring that we are duplicating the work of Lucifer. We are doing what Lucifer did, which is our father. So another part where we see is that Christ tells them consequence of their lives and he tells them the difference between what they tell themselves and what is the truth see he starts out by bringing in their biggest lie which is mo which is abraham i like to bring out abraham as the biggest lie because abraham is the first part of the lie because abraham gives them the awe of self-righteousness yes ma'am because yes. seeing the promise which was given to Abraham, which makes them the descendants, quote unquote, of Abraham, the chosen people. It's a very big lie. It's a very <laughs> important lie because <laughs> they, they don't they don't remember even Abraham. Christ said, true Abraham, all nations shall be blessed. That means he's not including Israel and only. He said, all nations shall be blessed. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what happened to you when you put yourself as, as the only one? You know, the, the funniest part of that story, and when I got older, I started to ask a simple question. So like, well, what about the children of Ishmael? That's right. What about the children of, of Edom? What about okay. the children of Edom? Well, and, and he blessed all of them. Right, and to Abraham had many wives. Well, of course. And what about them? So, and these these thoughts processes is based on, again, it's a self-righteous. It's a prejudice. Amen. They are prejudice uh, 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 up top. All right. So now, Pastor said it, so now I can go further to what we're talking about, which is prejudice. 
which is racism, the precursor to racism is prejudice. Maybe of course it is, it is the quality. In fact, right now, as we speak, mm -hmm. as we speak, in Jerusalem right now, in, in Israel, most of the so-called black Eskan brethren, they don't give them the right. Most of them. And even now, if you are a so-called white, you don't have the same treatment. In fact, you will see it now, as we speak right now, as we speak right now, looking, look, the so-called Jew, we call Jew. You don't see they are segregated in a group of white man and white woman only. And the irony, the irony of the <laughs> and please, please, before you go there, before you go there, and remember, remember, Abraham, we are talking about, is a black man. Moses, Moses, which is the 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 the, the, the redeemer, the savior, is a black man, and none of them have any thought about that mm -hmm. to see that the almighty god the creator of all things is not a racist so we're going back to the point i was going to make about the last part of the racism is the ism and we have to acknowledge that before it was racism it was tribal wisdom tribalism is the main part of it all because even in races with if you go to ireland if you got two verse two people fighting each other it's not it's not racism it's still racism but it's the irish versus the english it's yes. one group versus the other they both yeah, tribalism. they're both white so it's the tribe the the celtic tribe versus the anglo-saxon tribe that's right so this is the work of the devil from the devil. of course so we have in there the devil's work from the beginning. The first thing that you will learn about the Jewish people is that they are they they call a group a group called the Samaritans, which it didn't it took me a long time to understand what was the point of calling people Samaritans. <laughs> I understand it as I got older, is that it is the northerns, the, the northern tribe, right? The northern tribe, meaning that at one point these people are the fallen group of the fallen israelites right before you before you go there let me give you a tip right there hmm. jew there is not such a thing as a jew yeah. there is not such a thing as a jew there is israeli right. the tribe of judah where Solomon and David came from. And the tribe of Judah, God did not destroy them yet because of their evil. So the tribe of Judah become the predominant point, a group that said that the person, I mean, I, I won't say, may believe that God, they take the word Jew. And therefore, when you call somebody Jew, anyone you call Jew, do you know what you are saying? You are saying that that person comes from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And remember, the tribe of Judah is only one tribe and the tribe of Manasseh. Mm -hmm. So it's only two tribes really carry on that Jew. What about the others? What about the other tribe? This is where now you come up with Samaritan in here. <laughs> the same group they call Samaritan are the same Israeli. <laughs> British go to Samaria. From Samaria now and the Judah and there are all those that are not which was under the power of Jehovah. All of them are Samaritan. But they are Israeli. 
not only Israeli, they are part of the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of, uh, 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 of Simeon, the all the tribe of uh, uh, Zebulun, all of them are part of that tribe you call Samaritan. <laughs> My Lord, I'm best. What a mess. What, what, what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go further if you say uh, uh, somebody is a if uh, what they would call a Samaritan first right but then if you say an Edomite who's an Edomite yeah. say who was a Haggai who was a Haggarite <laughs> so these are all still the same tribe they still the same tribe my dear all the, 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 the children of Abraham quote unquote but tribalism is the key because what the devil does is he separates the family. And if the fight with brother between brothers started way back from the beginning, how he kills you is by first going after the husband and the wife, and then the son and his brother. And that the children of the, and it continues every path. Every path is to separate God's children from a God's family. So to separate man from his wife, separate brother from brother and grandchildren from grandson, and all continue that fight. That fight is always there. It's the constant fight. It is the constant way to destroy us. And the way it finds itself is in the scripture itself. And every time the word was taken to fix that fight, the devil took the word from you and replaced it with a new word. Yes, man. Yes. Oh, what a beautiful way to put it. <laughs> This is exactly, this, but but again, we come from uh, uh, um, uh, the Pharisees. But right now we are not in the Pharisees. Now we are about us now, because what you are, what you touching, you touching us, the very life right now we live in. You don't see uh, in the in the household, in the house, in our household right now. There are divisions. And those divisions meant to separate each one of us. And then he infilled it. In the political realm, they have a phrase, they have a way to say, divide conquer. and conquer. That's a devil, just that's a devil way of doing things. And that's a why you see Republican and Pharisees and, and the Democrat. They are the same thing, not only that, but in all other countries, you'll find opposite side, which don't have most concern about the people. They don't have no concern whatsoever about the people. But well, we could take Haiti as a good example. Haiti, <laughs> when it was when it was at its at its infancy was able to topple a great country because they were united again in one thing. And as soon as they became, as soon as they became free, the first thing that happened is the, leaders, the leaders were divided. The leaders parted with each other from the beginning. And that was planted from France. They knew they could no longer beat them as a, as a group of people. So they plotted against the leaders and they took one side or the other. And that was yes. the beginning. So even in its infancy, a country that had great promise to be the, the bench as started out as the, 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 the leading force against slavery in the new world. It was the leading force against slavery. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which, would, which itself made them a very powerful country because we proved that it is possible for a small band of slaves to, to defend themselves against a powerful nation and to rise up. That was, that, the devil, and I'm not gonna say white people, I just say the devil, saw the problem. Because the world has it existed, requires slavery to exist. The king, the masters of this world needs slavery to exist. Agreed. Today, we don't know it, slavery still exists. Okay. Well, go back. Oh, that's a very good point. Go back to the same thing Jesus said. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you feel. what a good point, which is connected exactly. It's connected. That, that, that's connection right there. You know what? 
That's a connection. And, and the word you use, the master, the leader, is not, you're not talking about the leaders and individual. You're not talking about the prior leaders. You're talking about the a specific leaders, which is Lucifer. He is the master of it. He's the one who caused the division. He's the one who have children, and those children carry out his work according to what Jesus said. You you're going to do the work of your father. So his children are carrying on the work. So what did they not know? Because they thought they were free. Yes, sir. Even the great leaders who themselves thought they were doing God's work realized <laughs> that the God that they were whose work they were doing was not God. Reality. But they were living righteously. Quote unquote, according to God, the God. That's, what, that's a good word, quote unquote. <laughs> not only that, <laughs> not only that, they were living a privileged life. You know, it wasn't like they were destitute. These are men of God, quote unquote, who have a high society, who believe that the, God has blessed them with land and property and all the things that go with the righteousness of being an elite person who does God's work. As we may know that priests were not poor in those days. You know, it's not how it Until was. now, not on those days, my brother, please give me a point. Until now, Until now. the majority of, of our pastors are the, are the poor. No. <laughs> the, well, you see, I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you with the, with the richest of the world. In fact, Christ referred to it. Christ referred to it. He said, now, God gives you knowledge so to accumulate things, but only that you're going to get. You're not going to go in the everlasting life because you work for your belly. It's only the food for your baby you want to get. But yes. So when you say that, the majority, the majority of pastors today, they are not poor. They are not poor. They dream the people to bring off them. Thinking that they say, for God, they don't end. And the people, as you say, go back to the subject. You shall, you, I, 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 if the sun set you free, you shall free and be. The people don't know. They believe them. They bring the people, not with knowledge of God, but knowledge of Lucifer. This, these, this, all, this also goes back to a certain part where Christ tells us in the Sermon on the Mount to give unto Caesar what is Caesar and to not, and that you shall serve no two masters. You can't God on mammon. These are all connected. Connected. All connected. We all connected. The beginning is that we are enslaved, that we live in a system of slavery, and we are subject to the master and it is not god amen this world yes, belongs yes. The we acknowledge only a small part of it but the reality is when he says the prince of this world he's telling you something when he says obey you can't serve two masters he's telling you something when he's telling you that the the pharisee did the work of the devil he's telling you something he's telling you the truth He's telling that you have been living a lie, that all of this is a lie, that all of this, that you value, this system, these things, these, even the religion itself, even the Bible itself is a lie. Because what you're not reading is the truth, which is God, which is in the Bible. 
But as I always say, the Bible is the Bible is not the word, it's the container of the word. That you have to seek the word. It is God who reveals to you the word, not just the Bible. You can be reading the Bible all day and not have the word. God gives you the word. It's in you. Amen. The truth I have a question. I have a question. What should we do? That's the question. Because right now, what you are telling also, what I am saying, I am saying that to follow Jesus. But uh, remember, the majority of us are following the lie. So what should we do? The beautiful thing about Jesus is that he doesn't give you the opportunity to lie because he tells you the truth in plain sight. That's why he came. He came not to be lied. He came not so anyone can lie about what he says. And he tells you to love thy brother as thyself. To love thy God with all thy mind. All thy mind. Amen. Amen. Your enemy. Love your brother. He tells Amen. you Amen. Amen. to life. These are the keys to eternal life. These are the keys to the word. These are the keys to the truth. Love is the word. Love Amen. is the truth. Amen. I was reminded something that Amen. Amen. my wife and it occurred to me that I couldn't tell the difference which came first, love or life. <laughs> Not giving the answer because I realized that although we have life, life cannot exist without something making life exist, right? So love is the reason for life. Is a drive. Why God? Why why God create in the first place? That is love. Why God make all these things in the first place? Why God don't want none to be perished in the first place? Even very Lucifer, we talking about, or very us, we talking about, because we are the root of Lucifer also. He loves us so much, he even gives himself to redeem us. Why? And the verse in the same passage in the scripture, which he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why can't we love? And what Jesus said now, if the sons make you free, you shall free indeed. So therefore, then the the key to life, love. the key to freedom, love. Yes, is the key to life is love. The key to freedom is love. The key to enjoy peace, to have peace, is love. <laughs> So I, I, I might be combining two terms where one, said, one is life, truth shall set you free. But we also know the term love shall set you free. Of course. Is, of course, my brother. If you love, you, you will. Uh, listen what he, what he said in the same scripture again. Love cover a multitude of sin. Love cover a multitude of sin. So we don't know. Here's the, the truth. The truth is, there is no love in stoning a person to death because of their sin. No sir. There is no love in not helping somebody because of the Sabbath. That's right. There's no love in hating another person because they're not your father's son. That's right. Treating somebody less than yourself because of war, and so that you took them as a slave. That's right. 
slavery. There is no love in trying to make evil. There's no love in treating a woman lesser than you because you are a man. And because yeah, that's right. you said Eve is the reason, so we treat women less. There's no love in that. There's no yes, but this is not this is hate. Amen. What is this is hate? What it is is the hatred that's already in you, and you just yes. You justify that hatred. You justify it is well actually actually is two things. Hmm. Is a hatred uh mingling with jealousy. Is a hate mingling with jealousy. You don't want the person to be just like you. You don't want the person to be succeed just like you. You don't want the person to have what you have. Well, that comes that again. That's Lucifer from the beginning. Yeah, of course. All of that is is that that spirit. That's that's where it comes from. Um, going back to something I said when I was saying that um, love versus life, right? So we have life is as I, I like to call it. It is the will to live, and love is the will to love for others to live, right? Is the desire, so I'm again, I'll say again, life is the, is the desire to exist. Sorry, that's what I mean to say. The desire to exist. Love is the desire for others to exist. Yes. So when does- how, 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 could, how could you have love for the, this, for the others to exist? How, what, no, not how, but why should you have love? Why should you have love for, for others to exist? Anyone could help us. Why should you have love for others to exist? Anyone could jump up in it. Why should anyone have love for others to exist? And not barely exist. Not only barely exist, but to excel. Why? Anyone, any one of us could jump in, in it. Well, I feel that um, I would only imagine what it would look like to not have. I think the first the first way to look to look at it the way I would look at it is what would it look like with no one <laughs> what will that look like what will that feel like what will I be sacrificing the the most um powerful thing is to understand that we were not created with ev knowing everything or knowing how to do everything and knowing how to survive with everything. We're giving instincts, we're giving knowledge, you know, to try to direct to find the answer. However, when I look at the world, when I look at the many different people and what they bring to the table, it <laughs> serve each other. We all serve one another. Same thing when we talk of we we belittle a particular position, whether it's about the cleaning person versus the president. You know, you you have to acknowledge both is equally important because one without the other compromises something. And when there is no other, there is a compromise that happens in 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 our life. We need one another, and thereby having love to accept one another in that aspect allows you to live too because then you wouldn't kill your own amen 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 amen, amen. it is not to us it is not to us to manipulate or to program where a brother or a sister should be. I hope you, you get what I'm saying. It is not to us to program, to make a program 
or to manipulate which possession your brother, your sister should be. That should not be in our calendar. It is up to the creator to do that. It's up to, our, to the creator to know where he's going to put each member in the society. But today, this is not what we see. What we see today, the program, even in the school, they have a curriculum which is programmed for the so-called upper class and another program for so-called middle class and another program for so-called the bottom line. That should not be described by us. Why? Why is that should not be done by us? Most the question. There is a program, or I put it plainly now, a curriculum. This is why today we have three classes in our society, which are what, who, um, who are the three classes? What is the three classes we have in our society? Who decided that? Who make it so? Well, Our leaders make it so because they are following, they are listening to the program of Lucifer. Our educators or teachers program it. The Board of Education. All these things have been programmed. This is why today in our places we call the first class. Who is the first class? The first class is those that are millionaires. The second class, so-called second class, for call male, 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 <laughs> male, 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 it is a so-called, but all of them come up with what? What do you see in those classes? What do you see in those classes? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What do you see in those classes? What I saw in those classes, all of them are slaves. All of them are slaves, whether the first class, the second class, or the third class. All of them are slaves. And that's why Christ go back. He said, if you sin, you are the servant of sin. You cannot stay in the house. All of them are slaves. The middle, the first class is a slave. The first, the second class is a slave. The last class is a slave. It depends the quality of that slavery. One of them, the bottom one, get it the most. So called, I may say. But nevertheless, I leave it alone. Let my brother uh, go back to the message. Well, uh, you, we can go, even, we can add to what you just said because we have to remember in that particular time, Israel was already in bondage to Rome. <laughs> and um, the the there is no the leaders are appoint are allowed to lead based on who the real leader is is the generals the Roman general. There's no act. The king who is Herod is not a king. He's a regent. He is placed by the so they are already in bondage. So as you said, the higher class of slaves they all they were all three different versions of slaves in that perspective. But the reality is all of us in the same, because Lucifer is the prince of this world, that makes it all. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right.
That's right. If he is king. I don't want to be part of his kingdom. So <laughs> in essence, it, it, I'm, I'm good. Whether you know, if if I rather be a, a, a be a as they say, I rather be a servant in heaven than a king in the in the in, in hell, right? So therefore, then, so therefore, then, if you don't want to be part of his kingdom, what should be our position? What should be the position we should take? We should follow Christ. Become and how we follow Christ? To do His will. To follow. Christ. How we do? How we do His work? No more love your brother as yourself. So That's you. right. That's right. This is why I said to 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 you guys long ago. This is why I said to you guys long ago, two thousand years. We are preaching. Two thousand years since Christ passed away, and now it's with the Father waiting for us. And now, as it's speaking, we find the same thing, the same ball game, hatred among the churches. And in fact, Christ was talking to the Jew. As you're talking, he was talking to the Jew. That means what you are telling me now, Christ was talking to the Christian today. <laughs> because the Jew was taking um abraham for umbrella that means they are god children and what are we taking for umbrella today as a so-called christian yes. <laughs> he is an umbrella and you see right now among us division we hate each other. Even in the church. If you are not a Baptist, you cannot come to a Methodist church and, and thinking to talk or, or clicking by because you are another denomination. You cannot go to a Jehovah Witness. In fact, Jehovah Witness don't come to, 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 to a group of a Baptist or no, they don't have that relationship. The same thing, seven day Adventists. The same thing Methodist, same thing Anglican. Where we get those kind of division, where we where those things coming from? <laughs> so you see, when Christ said, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free," the truth is. The truth is, all God's children are one. We must start loving each other now until we don't know what. We become so suspicious to each one of us. Every one of us are suspicious to another one. So, I think the here's what I've come to understand. Um, what is the truth is the word, right? Um, I came to a realization that scientists are not sorry, psychologists and, mm. and preachers do the same thing. <laughs> so, so here's how I explain it. Um, what I realized is while psychologists work with what they call the mind, they do not acknowledge that what they do is that the mind is the spirit and what preachers they deal with what is the spirit they do not realize that the spirit is the mind so the disconnect is in their interpretation but what i've come to realize is the mind of god or the spirit of god is the truth and that we live in the spirit of god the mind of god that we are currently existing as figments of god's imagination so a good way to understand it is if you had a dream, when you have dreams, and you see things happening in your dreams, right? Are they real? They're not real because you're dreaming. And the reason they're not real is because when you wake up that 
that dream stop yeah disappears. but when you were dreaming say for instance your whatever that person who was in your dream he doesn't know that he's not real <laughs> He is absolutely certain that he exists. And you do not know that you're dreaming, so you are certain he exists. The difference between you and God is God is aware that he is dreaming and that the only way for you to exist is for him to acknowledge you, for you to acknowledge of your existence in his dream. And when you become real, it's when God gives you the power to be like him. Till then, you are not real. And all of this that you will see, all of this that we see is not real. It's not the truth. Because the thing about truth is when it's all over, the dream goes away. All of this disappears. When God decides it is over, all of this goes. And the only thing that lives, that stays, is who God decides. We are living in what is not the truth. God is the truth. Christ is real. Christ is telling you the truth shall set you free. It's to tell you that because through, only through him you are made real. And everything else is false. Everything else that you hold on to is false. Everything, all these things that you find important are false. Even the very people that you trust, that you believe that to be the work of God, it's false because even they could be used against you. Even those that were told to you that this is what God is telling you to do is fallacy because Lucifer wants you to not exist because Lucifer doesn't want to exist. And his only mission is to take us with him. He is a lie. And everything that he is, is to make you a lie. Man. All that is, is that we do the works of our father. What Christ was saying is you are perpetuating the lie. The lie that it takes Moses to make you, um, that you are, you are righteous because of Abraham, sorry. That you, because you obeyed, you obeyed a seventh day, which <laughs> follows the lies that were created from elsewhere. That you were righteous because of a day that you called the Passover, the Passover is a lie because it's actually something that was created because of the sun. We turn it into Easter, which is also a lie. These are all lies. These are not truth. We put these things and we say this is the law. The law according to who? Christ is telling you the law. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is not just, it is not right to stone someone to death. That is the truth. And to you to say that it was or one time is a lie. So Christ is telling you the truth. The truth shall set you free. Now, that was the whole part of the scripture. It's the whole part of the scripture was Christ is telling you, sin no more. That's the part that's important, that's missed. All of us, each and every one of us, the one thing devil wasn't want us to do is know the truth that the only way to, to God, the only way away from him is to know that Christ is the truth. And if you follow Christ, you will obey his truth, you will obey his word, and you love as you love God with all your might. You love your brother as yourself. You forgive your enemy. You love your enemy. You are free from the lie. You are eternal. You become like God. You have access to eternity. You have access to the mind of God. You get to be part of God's creation. Because until then, you are still just a figment of God's imagination that when he decides, it's over. You have not existed yet. The truth is you have yet to live. You are not born yet. You have nothing. You are nothing. You do not begin until you die. That's the reality. Lucifer knows this. Lucifer has already died. He is dying. He is dead. We don't know this. So we think we're serving God, which is the prince of this world. And God is Christ came to tell us, you cannot serve two masters. He told us, 
Give unto Caesar what is to Caesar. He told us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. He told us in my days, Abraham was, was a, a man of joy. He's telling you who I am. I am God. I am the truth. I am what is important, and I am the way. I am the law. I am love. I am righteousness. Do as I do, and you know the truth. And you knew the truth. Now I'm telling you, follow and obey and do the truth. That's the word. That's the reality. That's the way to be free. At the end of the day, if you understand who you are in Christ, you acknowledge who you are to be. It is not to just say who you want to be, who you ought to be, is what you ought to be, which is like him. So the enemy will tell you these things of who you were, or who you are now, or who you are struggling to become. The enemy will tell you what you cannot do. He will tell you how you can avoid this and that, or what is it that's going to happen for you to do this. Christ is telling you, I am the way. Amen? Yes. I yes. Am. The truth has set you free. It means that from here on in, through Christ, you are part of eternity. Your mission, your purpose, because of God's love, he created you to be with him eternally. Amen? Because of love. Simply because of love. That's the whole part. That's the whole point. And if you love, you don't hurt. If you love, you don't steal. If you love, you don't jealous. you're not jealous. If you love, so it's redundant to say you sin, because to love is to not sin. It's a simple thing. Amen. Yes, my brother. Yes. Yes, it is a, it is a, it is, it is, it's, it's fed up. It is a time that we who call ourselves God children should walk in love and don't hate nobody. Nobody. Don't classify nobody. Whether the person is poor, whether the person is rich, whether the person is, is half rich, or whatever, whether the person is a black man, whether the person is a white man, whether the person is a so-called Jew, whether the person is a so-called Israeli, whether the person become whatever, in your face, in your presence, only one thing you see. God children. No matter what happened, you see God children. And as my brother said that indeed, if you are God children, you don't kill. You leave that to God to do that. God don't give us power to kill. He give us power to love, not to destroy. He give us power to build, not to destroy. He give us power to be one, knowing that, as my sister already said, each one of us in this earth, and I'm talking the world, all the world, each one of us, God has the purpose for each one of us. And if God give, has a purpose for each one of us, it is not I to destroy God's purpose for his children. It is not I to diminish God's purpose to any of his children. My purpose, my, my thinking, or my way as God thinking is to excel each one of us. Each one of us must be excel. In other words, each one of us must help the other to excel. Martin Luther King says something which is a very concrete word a statement he said. He said, nobody get up there without somebody put you there. Nobody, nobody get up there without somebody put you there. No matter what, somebody 
what you did. And finally, God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Benja, put you there. And I thank God that he has excelled us and extended to us that he is the truth. And what he's telling, you, telling us is the truth. So please, my brethren, wherever you are, whatever the language you speak, it doesn't matter. Whatever amount of money you have, it does not matter. Whatever, even if you are a very poor person, it does not matter. If you are a so-called black person, it does not matter. If you are a so-called white person, it does not matter. If you are a green, whatever you may be, it does not matter before the God. Because all of us, before God, we are one. We struggle as one. And we live as one. And that's the way God wants us to be. Right now there is a war in Ukraine. Killing. Africa has a war right now in Yemen. Killing. Not recently, you find another war in Africa again. Killing. Nobody really intervened to hit. Except to send money. Yes, it's true, you send money. But hatred is still going to live. Unless we ask God to the Lord of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. That we, 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 we take out hate from us. We're always going to kill each other. Safe. You see nobody but yourself. <laughs> it's a cliche. Understand, it's a cliche. It's not true. That's a lie. It's all of us have to exist. In order for us to live in harmony, to live in peace, to enjoy life the way we ought to enjoy. My brother, I can't talk too much. I finish. May God be with you as you listen to the truth. And come, let us reason together. Come, let us ask questions. Not to trick people, not to make people look small, but just to know what can we do. Let us come and let us come and talk. Let us come and talk, please. That you could learn from me. I could learn from you. Each one of us could learn and we all could go together. That's the way it is. Not to come and trap just take the Pharisees who are trapping Christ, try to, to ask and do things that they know what they want already. They already decided that they want to kill him. Kill him. And as he said that also, he said that, well, you are from Abraham, but yet to look into kill me. <laughs> so my brethren, it is time. It is time. You go to check. I'm not saying don't go to check. But if you have a particular group that you attach to and another group you don't attach, my brethren, that's not good. That's evil. You should be attached to any group because you are not pertaining to one group. You are not belong to one group. You belong to all of us. You are mine and I am yours. That's the way it is. One way or the other. You are mine and I am yours. I belong to you. You belong to me because God says so. God bless you. I want to close um just the, the part, the word free is, is something that I, I want to emphasize, is that Jesus Christ was the only free man. <laughs> and if you understand that, is to know that Jesus Christ knew everything that was coming. He knew everything that was coming to him. And not one part before these times was he not a free man. Did he ever walk as a person in bondage, 
knowing that he was going to his great bondage. But Jesus Christ was free. And his job was to get us to have the same freedom. Amen. He walked free amongst the dead. Yes. And us. To be free from death. That is the purpose. When you acknowledge that everything else is death, the world around you is dead. You are free from death. To know Christ is to know the truth. To know the truth is to have eternal life. Please you from death. I do not walk, I do not have any consummation of what's going around me. The world is ending. The world will come to an end. Fire and destruction is coming, and yet I, I'm at peace. So my actions have caused evil. I'm at peace. Yes, sir. With me, even in my darkest days, I'm at peace with myself. I'm at peace with God because at the end of the day, I am free from the destruction of the world. I am free from destruction from within. The devil wants me to die in my darkness. The devil wants me to die in this darkness. I want you to know that freedom is peace. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brother. Oh, God bless you. God bless your word to get that. The word peace, without peace, you can't function, you know. If you don't have peace, you can't function, you know that. You, this is why many of us have a, 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 have, have a, a problem, a lot of problem in a way because we don't have peace. We trouble. We kill ourselves because we don't have peace. We're crying for peace right now, and in Ukraine, we're crying peace for the, the country that Russia and all of them come together to fight, and they prepare to fight, and they are fighting, and people are dying because there is no peace. There is no peace. And the peace we're looking for is in our heart, in, in our life in our heart, in our spirit. Our spirit must have a peaceful spirit in order for us to function the way we ought to be functioned by the way of God. That's what God bless you. Actually, the peace is in, in the heart. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. When you know the truth, when you know the truth, the truth should set you free. Amen, amen. You completely have everything to go. Amen. 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 Oh, wonderful. And that truth, we've been talking about it. There's only one man, one man that sure. carry all. And you will have that peace. And that peace is going to make you make a good decision. And you get coming with all the knowledge. That's the truth. God bless. If they don't have that, they're still in the dark. Yes. Yes. They're still going to wait. They're still going to fight. Yes, right. They're still going to do what they do. Because they're in the dark. That's where the grace come in. Thank God. You know, you, because of this, today you find in this society, I'm talking the world, including America, everybody have to have a gun in your house. And we call it having a gun for safety. <laughs> But do really gun bring safety in your house? I have to have a knife on me for safety. But do really these things bring safety? Do gun bring safety? Do a nuclear bomb bring safety? Do my missile bring safety? I think these things bring more destruction. 
not only to the people, but also to the environment, to the trees, to the birds, to the animal, to the very water that we drink. We contaminate them with those things. What are we looking for? We're looking for peace. But do we have it? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, you and I honor you for your truth. I thank you for giving us this understanding, Lord God. And I pray for many souls out there who may not know this truth, who are looking for their understanding, who are struggling with their own reality, to not realize, Lord God, that their spirit is your spirit, that their mind comes from your mind. And that it's only when we are aligned our minds with yours that we are in the truth. We understand that our purpose, our whole purpose is to love. And our whole purpose is because of love. And that in love is the truth. And that with you, in your truth, we are eternal. God, thank you for this truth. I pray, Lord, that you will help those out there who are struggling to understand the, the peace within you that no matter what goes around and whatever's going on within them or what is going on around them, Lord God, that you know, that they understand, Lord Father God, that whatever it is, is not the truth. Whatever mm -hmm. is happening around them is a lie. Whatever is happening from within them is a lie. But that mm -hmm. they are the truth and that you will be eternal. And that as long as they have you, they have eternity. I pray, Lord God, that you will help them Lord Father God, to deal with the struggles of the world and deal with the struggles within themselves, Lord God, so that they can have mm -hmm. their peace. I pray for peace. I pray mm -hmm. for everyone to be able to find their peace in you as you are the love mm -hmm. of life, the creator of life because of love, that we all acknowledge that we are here because of love. Mm -hmm. I thank you. I honor you. And I magnify your holy name. I pray, Lord God, that you will help those to, who are suffering to overcome their suffering. We know, Lord mm. God, that you have already overcome it, but we live in a world that does not see through your eyes. Mm. I pray, Lord God, that you help us to see the world through your eyes and not ours. That we can close our eyes to the truth that you have designed, that some may struggle, but at the end of the day, all who are with you will rejoice. And that pain is for a short while, but <clears throat> happiness, joy is eternal with you. I pray, Lord God, you help them to find forgiveness and to forgive others as they seek for your forgiveness, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, you forgive all of us for our wrongs, all of us for our sins, and help us to overcome our struggles. I praise you. I honor you. In my <clears throat> holy name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 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 All right, so we want to thank everybody for being a part of this Bible study session. Um, we pray that the peace of God is with you wherever that you may be. Um, that you find that peace and to find the peace is to know the truth. And to know the truth is to find the peace. <clears throat> we are asking the Holy Spirit to reveal what that truth is in you. And that, again, we will be meeting next week at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just know that the link will be in the description box for you guys to click on and be live with us. But until then, I want you all have a wonderful week and be safe until we see you again. Have a blessed one. Amen. Amen.